Welcome to the Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus Online Library. My name is Edward Cuera, and today we will be talking about strabismus. Strabismus is a misalignment of the eyes that can occur at any age, but is most commonly seen in children. The danger of this problem in children is that they do not experience double vision as an adult would, and instead turn off the eye that is not straight, causing a poorly formed brain-eye connection with loss of vision and depth perception. Adults, on the other hand, may have debilitating diplopia or double vision. It can be very difficult for parents to determine if their child has strabismus. By using a light source pointed in the direction of the child's eyes, it can help determine whether there is a true problem. Notice the symmetric location of the light reflection here in this child at about 9.30 to 10 o'clock. Although one or both of the eyes may appear crossed, this is just an illusion that is common in young children when the skull has not fully developed. The nasal bridge is wider in this age group. If a child's eye is truly crossed, this is known as esotropia. It may present at birth or around age two to four as a child's natural eye prescription changes over time. Some children are more susceptible to this problem than others, such as if they have a family history of the problem, a neurologic condition, or developmental problem. Certain conditions can also cause this to happen in adults, such as strokes. Notice here the asymmetry in the light reflection, although this is very slight. This is sufficient enough for a child to turn off the eye and result in poorly formed brain-eye connection, in this case in the left eye, especially if it happens frequently enough throughout the day. Exotropia is a condition where the eyes separate from each other. The child will choose one eye to use during these episodes if they are intermittent, which may be very common in its initial presentation. The danger arises if one eye is turned off frequently enough that it results in abnormal development of the brain, or if both eyes are constantly separated from each other such that the brain has difficulty developing binocularity or depth perception. This is frequently present if the problem is constant, but the child alternates fixation, switching between his eyes so that one eye does not become weaker when compared to the other. Here is an example of exotropia. Notice that the light reflection is asymmetric here, indicating that the eye is drifting outwards. There are many other forms of strabismus that also have additional vertical and torsional or twisting components that require treatment. These are frequently associated with a horizontal component as well. Management will depend on the severity of the problem. We typically evaluate the problem by looking at several parameters such as vision, depth perception, and control of the misalignment. If vision is asymmetric, or if there is an absence of depth perception, treatment is indicated. We also classify control of the deviation based on what is required for the child to bring the eye back in. With good control, the eye comes right back in after it drifts without any blink or any stimulation. Fair control means that the child needs to blink or someone needs to stimulate the child in order for the eyes to straighten. And poor control means that the eye is drifting even with stimulation. We do not consider surgery based on just the amount of the drift. We look at whether the control is changing, whether depth perception is changing, or whether vision is affected. And we try conservative management before going to surgery. Management of sure business will depend on the severity of the problem. If the problem is mild, meaning it is not always present or well controlled by the child, it may just be monitored to allow the visual system to develop on its own without any interference. However, if it starts to worsen, things such as glasses may be first considered to optimize vision if there is any need for glasses, or glasses can also be used to improve a child's control of the problem, which in this case would not be specifically just for vision. Patching may be necessary to improve vision in an eye that is being ignored by the brain for example, if the left eye is drifting out constantly but not the right eye, we may patch the right eye to force the brain to use the left eye so that it does not get left behind. 
surgery is considered when all conservative treatments have failed. We must remember that there is no cure for this problem, which is why it may come back at any time in life, even if treated successfully. The goal is to optimize a child's visual development during this critical phase of life. This concludes our video on the basics of sure business. For additional information on other common eye problems, please check out our website and our YouTube channel.